Hello and welcome to this updated simple budget spreadsheet tutorial. I'm really excited to walk you through the newest version of the template and the first thing I want to highlight is just the instructions tab which is the very first sheet in the file. It's going to be super helpful and I want to just recommend that you start here because it has everything that you need to make sure that you get everything set up properly from the start. Step one involves duplicating and renaming the budget template. The budget template is the tab that has all of the formulas and you want to duplicate it and give it a new name based on the month and the year that you're budgeting for. So here's the key. When you write out the full name and month after you've duplicated that sheet, you want to make sure that you follow the right formatting. The first letter of the month should be capital. The rest are lowercase. There should be a space and then the four digit year. Avoid using all caps or all lower cases. Now, if you don't follow this format, the budget sheet will still work, but it just won't link to the dynamic calendar. And that's an important thing to notice. So if you use this right formatting, first letter of the month capitalized and the rest lowercase with a space and the four digit year, it will link to the dynamic calendar and pull all of your information. The calendar tab does not need to be duplicated. You simply have to use the drop down to select the month and the year that you're working from, and it will pull all of your data into this window. All right, with that out the way, let's get to the rest of the setup. Let's go ahead and dive right into the budgeting tab. I want to point out that you can budget for any time frame that you prefer. For example purposes, I do have this spreadsheet scheduled to budget for one month from the 1st to the 30th, but you can adjust these dates if you're interested in budgeting just for two weeks. You can definitely do that. If you want to budget just for one week, you can also change the dates accordingly. So go ahead and feel free to add whatever start and ending period works best for you in terms of your pay cycle and how you want to budget. The next tab is basically where you can input your currency and if you're in another country you can definitely feel free to add the appropriate currency. The first thing I want to highlight are the colors in the different columns here. So whenever you see a column that has a colored background those are fields that will be auto populated for you. Please do not try to enter any data in any of the columns that have a colored background. Those have formulas built in and they will auto populate based on the information that you feed it. So the only columns that you're going to be adding data to are the columns that are white. Okay. Or they're there are no colors in the background. Um, at the top, once you enter information, you're going to see the amount left to budget, the amount left that you have to spend. Um, there's going to be an allocation summary. And at the bottom, when you scroll down, this is your transaction log. And this is where you're going to be entering your bills and your expenses each day as they come in and they will auto populate at the top. One thing I want to highlight about this particular spreadsheet that makes it a little bit different than others is this calendar template. When you've entered your budget and certain bills that are due on specific dates, it is going to appear here in this calendar overview, which is, I think, a really great way to quickly take a look at your entire month and what bills are coming due. The extra added bonus that I have and I added is a to-do list. Maybe there are certain things that you're considering that month that you haven't put in your budget as of yet, or you're still making kind of decisions about, but they may have some financial implication. You can go ahead and put a to-do list or things to consider that's coming up for the month. And when you enter them and you enter the date, it's going to automatically populate towards the bottom part of your calendar. So these are just things that may not be in the budget as of yet, but they're tentative or they're things that you want to keep in mind. I'm going to go ahead now 
and fill in some of this data and then you're going to see exactly how it works. Okay, so this is the area where you're going to go ahead and enter your income, your bills, you can add the date that the bill is due, the amount that you expect it to cost, as well as your expenses. These could be variable expenses, anything that you're saving towards, the amount that you're saving per month, as well as whatever debts you are um, saving or putting money towards. The transactions log as mentioned earlier is exactly where you're going to be entering your expenses and bills on a daily basis. So when you go to the grocery store, whatever amount you spend, you enter the amount, you add the category and the subcategory, and it automatically deducts it from the budget or the number that you allocated for that budget item. So as your day goes on throughout the month, your transactions log is where you're entering all of your data. And you'll see at the top of the spreadsheet, the amount left to budget, the amount left to spend, and your cash flow summary, etc. Keep in mind too that each column has a utilization field, and that basically tells you how on target you are with your budget, if you're over or if you're under. So remember that this is a living document. You may make adjustments to your budget as the month goes along if you're over or under in a particular category. Okay, so you'll notice after you've entered all of your bills, your expenses, your savings, and your debt um, allocations for the month, I want you to click on the calendar template. Uh, so for this particular month, you'll notice that all of the bills that were associated with a specific date were automatically entered into this calendar template area. So if I were to go back to this budget sheet, you'll see the rent was due on the 1st, car loan was due on the 10th, the second car loan is on the 18th, etc. When you go to this page, you will clearly see the rent was on the 1st, the first car loan was on the 2nd, the 10th, etc. And it populates again on this calendar view. So all of your bills, this will be a nice quick monthly uh, view to be able to see what bills are coming up. Now I also added a to-do list on the right hand side. And so these are things that you might want to keep in mind as far as upcoming potential expenses. Say you're taking uh, some piano lessons and that's the registration day is on the 10th and you you may need to go to figure out if you still want to do the piano lessons. I don't know, but um, basically you can put your to-do list and what date of the month that item corresponds to. And at the bottom of every day, there's two lines basically where you can input anything from your to-do list. It automatically populates here. Okay. So don't try to type directly into this field, these fields, these fields are going to be populated from here. So, Say I wanted to sign up at the gym and I wanted to do that on, let's sit, pick the 26th of the month. You see that it automatically populates into this area. And as you complete the tasks, you can check them off and then it will give you a pie chart to say how much of your to-do list has been checked off. And you'll see it crosses it out automatically. Same for the bills. So when your rent has been paid on the first, you can click that button on the left and it automatically crosses them out as you accomplish and pay those bills and debts off. All right, hopefully this helps. Enjoy.